Hey guys, it's Jordan and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to share with you my theories for A Court of Wings and Ruin, covering some of my predictions or questions that I have, lingering questions that are unanswered. I did just finish my reread of Akamath, so it's very fresh in my mind and there are a lot of things that I hope we see in this third book and that I hope will come to fruition. So I don't think I need to say this here, but just in case you aren't aware, this is going to include spoilers for both Akatar and Akamath. And there are not gonna be spoils for Pyre Storms, but I am going to to touch on just a few things, but it's nothing that's gonna spoil that series for you. If you haven't read both books in Avatar, I highly recommend you not continue watching this. And we are all waiting for this crossover to happen in some way. Now this one I didn't think of on my own. This one I saw on Pinterest. And I just thought I'd share it with you because it's really interesting and I thought it was a little far-fetched. Trina got really excited about it when I shared it with her so maybe it is more possible than I thought. So there is a character that we meet in Empire Storms named Fenris and he has this unique and very rare ability. Sarah J Mass uses this phrase to describe his powers. He has a rare ability as something that allows him to slip in between the folds of the world. And that sounds like winnowing to me, I even mentioned this in my Empire Storms book talk that it sounded like Fenris could winnow, but she doesn't actually use the term winnow because that is a term from Akmaf. But it's like this really rare thing that nobody else can do and it's just Fenris who can do it. So it makes you wonder, is he originally from Prithian? Did he come to Throne of Glass through a ward gate? Did maybe his ancestors come to Throne of Glass through a ward gate? Is he possibly a descendant a Feyre and Resand is what people are saying. Or as far to go as say it's their child. Because when you look at the letters to spell Fenris, people are saying F stands for Feyre, E stands for Elaine, N for Nesta, and then R Y S for Reese. Maybe. I think it's a little far-fetched. He can winnow. He's like the only character in the entire series who can winnow. It's a very distinct power that's used a lot in Akatar. so I feel like there has to be something going on there. Do I think he's like their child? I don't know. He can shapeshift into a wolf, which seems to have some kind of significance, but also Fenris is the name of a Norse mythological creature who is a giant wolf. So it makes sense that this character named Fenris could also turn into a wolf if he's based on this North mythological creature. But maybe it's also named Fenris because he's the child of Feyre and Resand. I don't really know. So now on to just my basic questions for Akawar. Things I'd like to see happen. What is Moore's secret power? She's a high fae. She's the only legitimate high fae in the Night Court. She's the only true person of the high fae lineage. Can she shapeshift? Does she have any special abilities? We know that Morse family has some kind of relation to like this truth ability. They have this weird orb that like shows truth or cannot lie. And Moore even says that you know I am the person of truth. You know that my bloodline is of truth to the queens when she's meeting with them. So does that mean she can like not lie? Does that mean that she can sense the truth? Can she sense people are lying to her? I feel like that's some kind of significance because she mentions more than once that her family has some kind of like connection with truth. Also at the end of the book when Asriel is injured in Highburn, she's healing Asriel. Like she's using her palms on his chest and like pouring healing magic into it. I don't think that's a common thing for Faye to be able to do. Like I know that they themselves heal quickly, but to be able to share healing abilities, I know Feyre can do it because we're able to give her blood to Reese and that heals him from the poison. But to be able to like send their healing capabilities into other people, again, is that like a, just a more thing? Is that like a Fey thing in general? What are Moore's powers? Why does Reese say that when everything else fails, he'll send in more? Next, I wanna know what happened to Nesta when she was in the cauldron. Feyre says after Nesta is thrown into the cauldron and when she's dumped out, I knew that she was different. From however Elaine had been made, Nesta was different. Even before she took her first breath, I felt it. As if the cauldron in making her had been forced to give more than it wanted. As if Nesta had fought even more after she went under and had decided that if she was to be dragged into hell, she was taking that cauldron with her. On page 607. So she seems to have come out of the cauldron not quite the same as Elaine. Maybe she'll have some special ability. She does have this really fiery, spitfire type of temper. So I wonder if that's gonna play it all into her having any type of powers. If her not going into the cauldron willingly is gonna give her any type of powers. It just seems like there was a lot of emphasis on how different Nesta was coming out of the cauldron compared to Elaine. Will Elaine not have powers? Will hers be more like healing nature, naturalist powers, like growing flowers and crap? Because I could see Elaine doing that. And Nesta's is more like, I will burn you all in hell with my fire magic. And my third one, what does Reese shift into exactly? He often is able to summon the wings, but there is one 
scene when he is having nightmares and Vera comes to his aid and he has transformed his fingers and toes into talons. And it's the only time he's ever mentioned that he has the ability to shift his hands and feet into talons. So can he shift the rest of his body? Is there like an actual other form that he can take? I was stalking Sarah J Mass's Pinterest page that I do quite often and she had pinned a couple pins of the Wendigo which is a creature in the Native American community, it, like possessed people and it comes in the night and it's very terrifying and people are very scared of it in Native American culture. So is it maybe not directly a Wendigo inspired by that creature? Can he like turn something like that? But what can he shift into? What is Reese's like form, this beast that he doesn't like to give himself over to? Apparently he's done it before because he doesn't like that side of himself, but what exactly can Reese become? I'm very curious. Number four, something else that I found on Sarah J Mass's Pinterest was pins of the Court of the Dead. We've never seen a Court of the Dead. Is this a mysterious court that we don't know about? That would be really cool and terrifying. During Starfall, Reese mentions that the stars are actually spirits on a journey and they come every year and never says where they go, where they're coming from. Are these spirits traveling to this court of the dead? Sarah J Mass pins a lot of very interesting things on Pinterest and I'm always like trying to read between the lines like what what is this pin? She's pinned a ton of Snow Queen pictures, but then we get news that it could possibly be a Snow White retelling, so there is no Snow Queen, Snow White. It possibly being a Snow White retelling kind of terrifies me because one of the biggest things of Snow White is she gets poisoned, put into a coffin in the woods, and is left there until Prince Charming comes by and kisses her. So I'm wondering, are they going to poison Feyre and put her in the woods, and then Tamlin's gonna come and try to kiss her, and it's not gonna work. It's gonna be like, oh, look, Tamlin, look, she's not meant for you. And then Reese will come in and save her. I don't want Feyre to be poisoned and left in the woods ever at any point in time. But Trina and I had a very interesting discussion about how Evil Queen could very possibly be Tamlin rather than the actual King of Highburn, which is what a lot of people think. I think that she has a much better argument for being Tamlin than for the King of Highburn being the evil stepmother queen. Next I wanna talk about Lucian. There's a lot of mystery surrounding Lucian. What is his powers? What can he do? We know he can winnow. That's like the only power we know he has. We've been told that only really strong Fae can winnow. And we know that he's the strongest of his brothers would have eventually beat all his brothers and become the High Lord of Autumn. If he's the strongest of all of his brothers and he can winnow, I would guess he has some kind of abilities that we don't know about. I want him to have some really cool Autumn Court abilities. I don't know what is from the Autumn Court fire, maybe? Also, what is with his eye? You know, his metal whirring eye. It whirs a lot, and it usually whirs in situations where there's lies and deceit happening. At the end of Akamath, his eye is whirring on Feyre when she claims that she is there for Tamlin and she's back home in the spring court. He's very suspicious of her, like he's detecting she is lying. So can the eye detect lies? Can it see through illusions? And lastly, I want to know what happened with Ianthi and what happened on Kalamai. We know that Kalamai took place in the Supreme Court. She says there's consequences. She's stated that we're going to learn what the consequences are, but I'm very interested if you have any ideas of what you think those could be and if Ianthi ties it all into that. Ianthi's also working with the King of Highburn and she's kind of twisting Tamlin's ideas to pull him to her side. But what's going on with the two of them? So those are some questions, some things that I want to see be brought to fruition in the next book. I'm very, very excited for it. I cannot wait to read Akawar. Like I am dying for that next book. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Tell me in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye!